New Atlantis, 1626, by Francis Bacon. We sailed from Peru, where we had continued by the space of one whole year for China and Japan, by the South Sea, taking with us victuals for twelve months, and had good winds from the east, though soft and weak, for five months' space and more. But then the wind came about and settled in the west for many days. So as we could make little or no way, and were sometimes in purpose to turn back, but then again, there arose strong and great winds from the south with a point east, which carried us up for all that we could do toward the north, by which time our victuals failed us, though we had made good spare of them, so that finding ourselves in the midst of the greatest wilderness of water in the world. Without vittles, we gave ourselves for lost men and prepared for death. Yet we did lift up our hearts and voices to God above, who showeth his wonders in the deep. beseeching him of his mercy, that as in the beginning he discovered the face of the deep, and brought forth dry land, so he would now discover land to us, that we might not perish. And it came to pass, that the next day, about evening, we saw within a kinning before us, Toward the north, as it were thick clouds, which did put us in some hope of land, knowing how that part of the South Sea was utterly unknown, and might have islands or continents thither, that hitherto two were not come to light. Wherefore we bent our course thither, where we saw the appearance of land all that night, and in the dawning of next day we might plainly discern that it was a land flat to our sight and full of buskage, brush, which made it show the more dark. And after an hour and a half's sailing, we entered into a good haven. Being the port of a fair city, not great indeed, but well built, and that gave a pleasant view from the sea. And we, thinking every minute long till we were on land, came close to the shore and offered to land. But straightway we saw divers of the people with batons in their hands, as it were, forbidding us to land, yet without any cries or fierceness, but only as warning us off by signs that they made. Whereupon, being not a little discomforted, we were advising with ourselves what we should do during which time there made forth to us a small boat with about eight persons in it, whereof one of them had in his hand a tip staff of a yellow cane, tipped at both ends with blue, who made aboard our ship without any show of distrust at all, and when he saw one of our number present himself, somewhat before the rest, 
He drew forth a little scroll of parchment, somewhat yellower than our parchment, and shining like the leaves of writing tables, but otherwise soft and flexible, and delivered it to our foremost men, in which scroll were written in ancient Hebrew and in ancient Greek, and in good Latin of the school, and in Spanish, these words, Land ye not, none of you, and provide to be gone from this coast within sixteen days, except you have further time given you. Meanwhile, if you want fresh water, or vittles, or help for your sick, or that your ship needeth repair, write down your wants, and you shall have that which belongeth to mercy. This scroll was signed with a stamp of cherubim's wings, not spread, but hanging downward, and by them a cross, this being delivered, the officer returned and left only a servant with us to receive our answer. Consulting hereupon among ourselves, we were much perplexed. The denial of landing and hasty warning us away troubled us much. On the other side, to find that the people had languages and were so full of humanity, did comfort us not a little. And above all, the sign of the cross to that instrument was to us a great rejoicing, and as it were a certain presage of good. Our answer was in the Spanish tongue, that our ship, it was well, for we had rather met with calms and contrary winds than any tempests. For our sick they were many, and in very ill case, so that if they were not permitted to land, they ran in danger of their lives. Our other wants we set down in particular, adding, that we had some little store of merchandise, which if it pleased them to deal for, it might supply our wants without being chargeable unto them. We offered some reward in pistolets unto the servant, and a piece of crimson velvet to be presented to the officer, but the servant took them not, nor would scarce look upon them, and so left us, and went back in another little boat which was sent for him. About three hours after we had dispatched our answer, there came toward us a person, as it seemed, of place. He had on him a gown with wide sleeves of a kind of water camole of an excellent azure color, far more glossy than ours. His under apparel was green, and so was his hat, being in the form of a turban daintily made and not so huge as the Turkish turbans, and the locks of his hair came down below the brims of it. A reverend man was he to behold. He came in a boat, gilt in some part of it, with four persons, more only in that boat, and was followed by another boat wherein were some twenty, when he was come within a flight shot of our ship,
signs were made to us that we should send forth some to meet him upon the water, which we presently did in our shipboat, sending the principal man amongst us, save one, and four of our number with him. When we were come within six yards of their boat, they called us to stay, and not to approach farther, which we did. And thereupon the man whom I before described stood up, and with a loud voice in Spanish asked, Are ye Christians? We answered, We were, fearing the less, because of the cross we had seen in the subscription, at which answer the said person lift up his right hand toward heaven and drew it softly to his mouth, which is the gesture they use when they thank God, and then said, If ye will swear, all of you, by the merits of the Savior, that ye are no pirates, nor have shed blood, lawfully or unlawfully, within forty days past. You may have license to come on land. We said, we were all ready to take that oath. Whereupon one of those that were with him, being, as it seemed, a notary, made an entry of this act, which done another of the attendants of the great person, which was with him in the same boat, after his lord had spoken a little to him, said aloud, My lord would have you know that it is not of pride or greatness that he cometh not aboard your ship, but for that in your answer you declare that you have many sick amongst you. He was warned by the conservator of health of the city that he should keep a distance. We bowed ourselves toward him and answered, We were his humble servants, and accounted for great honor and singular humanity toward us, that which was already done, but hoped well that the nature of the sickness of our men was not infectious. So he returned, and a while after came the notary to us aboard our ship, holding in his hand a fruit of that country, like an orange, but of color between orange tawny and scarlet, which cast a most excellent odor. He used it, as it seemed, for a preservative against infection. He gave us our oath, by the name of Jesus and his merits, and after told us that the next day, by six o'clock in the morning, we should be sent to and brought to the stranger's house, so he called it, where we should be accommodated of things, but for our whole, both for our whole, and for our sick. So he left us, and we offered him some pistoles, he, smiling, said, He must not be paid twice for one labor, meaning, as I take it, that he had salary sufficient of the state for his service. For, as I, I after learned, they called an officer that taketh rewards twice paid. The next morning early, they came to us, there came to us the same officer that came to us at first with his cane, and told us he came to conduct us to the stranger's house, and that he had prevented the hour 
because we might have the whole day before us for our business. For, said he, if you will follow my advice, there shall first go with me some few of you and see the place and how it may be made convenient for you. And then you may send for your sick and the rest of your number, which ye will bring on land. We thanked him and said that his care, which he took of desolate strangers, God would reward. And so six of us went on land with him. And when we were on land, he went before us and turned to us and said, He was but our servant and our guide. He led us through three fair streets. And all the way we went, there were gathered some people on both sides, standing in a row, but in so civil a fashion, as if it had been, not to wonder at us, but to welcome us. And divers of them, as we passed by them, put their arms a little abroad, which is their gesture when they bid any welcome. The stranger's house is a fair and spacious house, built of brick of somewhat a bluer color than our brick, and with handsome windows, some of glass, some of a kind of cambric oil, he brought us first into a fair parlor above stairs, and then asked us what number of persons we were and how many sick. We answered, we were in all, sick and whole, one and fifty persons, whereof our sick were seventeen. He desired us to have patience a little, and to stay till he came back to us, which was about an hour after, and then he led us to see the chambers which were provided for us, being in number nineteen, they having cast it, as it seemeth, that four of those chambers, which were better than the rest, might receive four of the principal men of our company, and lodge them alone by themselves, and the other fifteen chambers were to lodge us two and two together. The chambers were handsome and cheerful chambers, and furnished civilly. Then he led us to a long gallery, like a torture or dormitory, where he showed us all along one side, for the other side was but wall and window, seventeen cells, very neat ones, having partitions of cedar wood, which gallery and cells, being in all forty, many more than we needed, were instituted as an infirmary for sick persons, and he told us withal that as any of our sick waxed well, he might be removed from his cell to a chamber, for which purpose there were set forth ten spare chambers, besides the number we spake of before. This done, he brought us back to the parlor, and lifting up his cane a little, as they do when they give any charge or command, said to us, Ye are to know that the custom of the land requireth that after this day and tomorrow, which we give you for removing your people from your ship, you are to keep within doors for three days. But let it not trouble you, 
nor do not think yourselves restrained, but rather left to your rest and ease. You shall want nothing. And there are six of our people appointed to attend you for any business you may have abroad. We gave him thanks with all affection and respect and said, God surely is manifested in this land. We offered him also twenty pistoles, but he smiled and only said, What, twice paid? And so he left us. Soon after our dinner was served in, which was right good viands, both for bread and meat, better than any collegiate diet that I have known in Europe, we had also drink of three sorts, all wholesome and good, wine of the grape, a drink of grain, such as is with us our L, but more clear, and a kind of cedar make, made of a fruit that country, a wonderful, pleasing, and refreshing drink. Besides, there were brought in to us great store of those scarlet oranges for our sick, which, they said, were an assured remedy for sickness taken at sea. There was given to us a box of small gray and whitish pills, which they wished our sick should take, one of the pills every night before sleep, which they said would hasten their recovery. The next day, after that our trouble of carriage and removing of our men and goods out of our ship was somewhat settled and quiet, I thought good to call our company together, and when they were assembled, said unto them, My dear friends, let us know ourselves, and how it standeth with us. We are men cast on land, as Jonas was out of the well's belly, when we were as buried in the deep. And now we are on land. We are but between death and life, for we are beyond both the old world and the new, and whether ever we shall see Europe, God only knoweth. It is a kind of miracle hath brought us hither, and it must be little less that shall bring us hence. Therefore, in regard of our deliverance past, and our danger present, and to come, let us look up to God, and every man reform his own ways. Besides, we are come here among a Christian people, full of piety and humanity. Let us not bring that confusion of face upon ourselves, as to show our vices, our unworthiness before them. Yet there is more, for they have by commandment, though in form of courtesy, cloistered us within these walls for three days. Who knoweth whether it will be not to take some taste of our manners and conditions? And if they find them bad, to banish us straightway, if good, to give us further time. For these men that ha they have given us for attendance may withal have an eye upon us. Therefore, for God's love, and as we love the will of our souls and bodies, let us so behave ourselves as we may be at peace with God and may find grace in the eyes of this people. Our company, with one voice, thanked me for my good admonition, and promised me to live soberly and civilly, and without giving any the least occasion of offense. So we spent our three days joyfully and without care, 
in expectation what would be done with us when they were expired, during which time we had every hour joy of the amendment of our sick, who thought themselves cast in some divine pool of healing, they mend it so kindly and so fast. The morrow after our three days was were past, there came to us a new man that we had not seen before, clothed in blue as the former was, save that his turban was white, with a small red cross on top. He also had a tippet of fine linen, and his coming in, at his coming in, he did bend to us a little, and put his arms abroad. We of our part saluted him in a very lowly and submissive manner, as looking that from him we should receive sentence of life or death. He desired to speak with some few of us, whereupon six of us only stayed, and the rest avoided the room. He said, I am by office governor of this house of strangers, and by vocation I am a Christian priest, and therefore am come to you to offer you my service both as strangers and chiefly as Christians. Some things I may tell you, which I think you will not be unwilling to hear. The state hath given you license to stay on land for the space of six weeks, and let it not trouble you if your occasions ask further time, for the law in this point is not precise. And I do not doubt but myself shall be able to obtain for you such further time as shall be convenient. Ye shall also understand that the stranger's house is at this time rich and much aforehand, for it hath laid up revenue these thirty-seven years, for so long it is since any stranger arrived in this part. And therefore take ye no care, the state will defray you all the time you stay, neither shall you stay one day the less for that. As for any merchandise ye have brought, ye shall be well used, and have your return either in merchandise or in gold and silver, for to us it is all one. And if you have any other requests to make, Hide it not, for ye shall find we will not make your continents to fall by the answer ye shall receive. Only this I must tell you, that none of you must go above a cairn, that is, with them a mile and a half from the walls of the city without special leave. We answered, after we had looked a while upon one another, admiring this gracious and parent-like usage, that we could not tell what to say, for we wanted words to express our thanks, and his noble free offers left us nothing to ask. It seemed to us that we had before us a picture of salvation in heaven, for we that were a while since in the jaws of death, were now brought into a place where we found nothing but consolations. For the commandment laid upon us, we would not fail to obey it, though it was impossible, but our hearts should be inflamed to trend further upon this happy and holy ground. We added that our tongues should first cleave to the roofs of our mouths, ere we should forget either this reverend person or this whole nation in our prayers. An intermission. The next statement, and 
information that will come later in the story or narrative requires you to remember that this island had not been visited by outsiders, likely of a different ethnicity than the people of the island for more than 30 years. And there was very likely a great need and desire for genetic diversity, which would allow a Rumspringa type uh, affair to occur on the island or a Mardi, a Mardi Gras an interruption of probably otherwise uh, conservatism for the sake of genetic diversity. And I think this has probably happened for millions of years of humankind. We also most humbly besought him to accept of us as his true servants by as just a right as ever man on earth were bounden, laying and presenting both our persons and all we had at his feet. He said he was a priest and looked for a priest's reward, which was our brotherly love and the good of our souls and bodies and more parishioners, of course. So he went from us, not without tears of tenderness in his eyes, and left us also confused with joy and kindness, saying among ourselves that we were come into a land of angels, which did appear to us daily and present us with comforts, which we thought not of, much less expected. The next day, about 10 o'clock, the governor came to us again, and after salutation said familiarly that he was come to visit us, and called for a chair and set him down, and we, being some ten of us, the rest were of the meaner sort or else gone abroad sat down with him, and when we were set, he began thus, We of this island of Ben Salam, meaning son of peace, for so they called it in their language, have this, that by means of our solitary situation and of the laws of secrecy that we have for our travelers, and our rare admission of strangers, we know well most part of the habitable world and are ourselves unknown. Therefore, because he that knoweth least is fittest to ask questions, it is more reason for the entertainment of the time that ye ask me questions then that I ask you. We answer that we humbly thanked him that he would give us leave so to do, and that we conceived by the taste we had already that there was no worldly thing on earth more worthy to be known than the state of that happy land. But above all, we said, since that we were met from the several ends of the world and hoped assuredly that we should meet one day in the kingdom of heaven, for that we were both parts Christians, we desired to know in respect that land was so remote and so divided by vast and unknown seas from the land where our Savior walked on earth. Who was the apostle of that nation? And how was it converted to the faith? 
It appeared in his face that he took great contentment in this our question. He said, Ye knit my heart to you by asking this question in the first place. For it showeth that you first seek the kingdom of heaven, and I shall gladly and briefly satisfy your demand. About twenty years after the ascension of our Savior, it came to pass that there was seen by the people of Renfusa, a city upon the eastern coast of our island, within night, the night was cloudy and calm, as it might be some mile into the sea, a great pillar of light as in Exodus thirteen twenty one to 22 Not sharp, but in form of a column or cylinder, rising from the sea a great way toward heaven, and on the top of it was seen a large cross of light. More bright and resplendent than the body of the pillar, upon which so strange a spectacle, the people of the city gathered a pace together upon the sands to wonder, and so after put themselves into a number of small boats to go nearer to this marvelous sight. But when the boats were come within sixty yards of the pillar, they found themselves all bound and could go no further, yet so as they might move ab to go about, but might not approach nearer. So as the boat stood all as in a theater, beholding this light as a heavenly sign, it so fell out that there was in one of the boats one of the wise men of the society of Solomon's house, which house, our or college, my good brethren, is the very eye of this kingdom, who having a while attentively and devoutly viewed and contemplated this pillar and cross, fell down upon his face, and then raised himself upon his knees, and lifting up his hands to heaven, made his prayers in this manner. Lord God of heaven and earth, thou hast vouchsafed of thy grace to those of our order to know thy works of creation and the secrets of them and to discern as far as appertaineth to the generations of men between divine miracles, works of nature, works of art, and impostures and illusions of all sorts. I do here acknowledge and testify before this people that the thing we now see before our eyes is thy finger and a true miracle. And forasmuch as we learn in our books that thou never workest miracles but to a divine and excellent end, for the laws of nature are thine own laws, and thou exceedest them not but upon great cause. We most humbly beseech thee to prosper this great sign and to give us the interpretation and use of it in mercy, which thou dost in some part secretly promise by sending it unto us. When he had made his prayer, he presently found the boat he was in movable and unbound, whereas all the rest remained still fast, and taking that for an assurance of leave to approach, he caused the boat to be softly 
and with silence rode toward the pillar. But ere he came near it, the pillar and cross of light broke up and cast itself abroad, as it were, into a firmament of many stars, which also vanished soon after, and there was nothing left to be seen but a small ark or chest of cedar, dry and not wet at all with water, though it swam. For those who know 2001, A Space Odyssey, he could have also said, it went into a place that was full of stars. And in the fore end of it, which was towards him, grew a small green branch of palm and when the wise man had taken it with all reverence into his boat, it opened of itself, and there was found in it a book and a letter, both written in fine parchment and wrapped in sindons of linen. The book contained all the canonical books of the Old and New Testament, according as you have them, for we know well what the churches which you receive, and the Apocalypse itself, and some other books of the New Testament, which were not at that time written, were nevertheless in the book, and for the letter, it was in these words. I, Bartholomew, a servant of the highest, and apostle of Jesus Christ, was warned by an angel that appeared to me in a vision of glory, that I should commit this ark to the floods of the sea. Therefore I do testify and declare unto that people where God shall ordain this ark to come to land, that in the same day is come unto them salvation and peace and good will from the Father and from Lord Jesus. There was also in both these writings, as well the book and as the letter, wrought a great miracle conform to that of the apostles in the original gift of tongues, for there being at that time in this land Hebrews, Persians, and Indians, besides the natives, every one read upon the book and letter, as if they had been written in his own language, and thus was this land saved from infidelity. As the remain of the old world was from water, by an ark, through the apostolical and miraculous evangel evangelism of St. Bartholomew. And here he paused, and a messenger came and called him forth from us. So this was all that passed in that conference. The next day, the same governor came again to us immediately after dinner and excused himself, saying that the day before he was called from us somewhat abruptly, but now he would make us amends and spend time with us if we held his company in conference agreeable. We answered that we held it so agreeable and pleasing to us as we forgot both dangers past and fears to come. For the time we heard him speak, and that we thought an hour spent with him was worth years of our former life, he bowed himself a little to us, and after we were set again, he said, Well, the questions are on your part. 
One of our number said, after a little pause, that there was a matter we were no less desirous to know, than fearful to ask, lest we might presume too far. But encouraged by his rare humanity towards us, that could scarce think ourselves strangers, being his vowed and professed servants, we would take the hardness to propound it, humbly beseeching him, if he thought it not fit to be answered, that he would pardon it, though he rejected it. We said, we well observed those his words, which he formerly spake, that this happy island, where we now stood, was known to few, and yet knew most of the nations of the world, which we found to be true, considering they had the languages of Europe, and knew much of our state and business, and yet we in Europe, notwithstanding all the remote discoveries and navigations of this last age, never heard any of the least inkling our glimpse of this island. This we found wonderful strange, for that all nations have interknowledge one of another, either by voyage into foreign parts, or by strangers that come to them, and though the traveler into a foreign country doth commonly know more by the eye than he that stayeth at home, can by relation of the traveller, yet both ways suffice to make a mutual knowledge, in some degree on both parts. But for this island, we never heard tell of any ship of theirs that had been seen to arrive upon any shore of Europe, no, nor of either the East or West Indies, nor yet of any ship of any other part of the world that had made return for them, and yet the marveled rested not in this, for the situation of it, as his lordship said, in the secret conclave of such a vast sea might cause it, but then that they should have knowledge of the languages, books, affairs of those that he such a distance from them, it was a thing he could not tell what to make of, for that it seemed to us a condition and proprietary of divine powers and beings, to be hidden and unseen to others, and yet to have others open as in a light to them. At this speech, the governor gave a gracious smile, and said that we did well to ask pardon for this question, we now asked, for that it imported as if we thought this land a land of magicians, that sent forth spirits of the air into all parts to bring them news and intelligence of other countries. Madriatsa Lidparifa it was answered by us all, in all possible humbleness, but yet with a continence taking knowledge that we knew that he spake it but merrily, that we were apt enough to think that there was somewhat supernatural in this island, but yet rather as angelical than magical, but to let his lordship know truly what it was that made us tender and doubtful to ask this question, it was not as not any such conceit, but because we remembered he had given a touch in his former speech, that this land had laws of secrecy touching strangers. To this he said, You remember it aright. And therefore, in that I shall say to you, I must reserve some particulars, which it is not lawful for me to reveal, but there will be enough left 
to give you satisfaction. You shall understand that which perhaps you will scarce think credible, that about 3,000 years ago, or somewhat more, the navigation of the world, especially for remote voyages, was greater than at this day. Do not think with yourselves that I know not how much it is increased with you within these six score years. I know it well, and yet I say greater than, than now. Whether it was that the example of the ark that saved the remnant of men from the universal deluge gave men confidence to venture upon the waters, or what it was, but such is the truth, the Phoenicians, and especially the Tyrians, had great fleets. So had the Carthaginians their colony, which is yet farther west, toward the east. The shipping of Egypt and of Palestine was likewise great. China also, and the great Atlantis, see Plato's Timaeus, that you call America, which have now but junks and canoes, abounded then in tall ships. This island, as appeareth by faithful registers of those times, had then 15,000 strong ships of great content. Of all this there is with you sparing memory or none but we have large knowledge thereof.
a note on
In our brew houses.
mathematical house.